Let's move on to the next step now. To step number three, which is this one. Animated all lit. Right, so what do we have now? Okay, well this is just similar to what we had before, but this is showing the end result of moving them up. You remember that chime file where I did all the chimes individually? Just use that one file, and I've added it to the timeline in the audio section, and I've cut them all out, and I've put them in layers. You can see that? This layer here, actually expand that a little bit so you can see the, the um, sound. So that is the ping. Let's turn the others off. Now that was from a lift cran, a uh, lift in slough. There we go. There is the ping. So let's look at the next one. Uh, that's a Mitsubishi lift. That's a Mitsubishi lift, I love that chime. That's my third chime. And the last one. <laughs> I had to go to a site to get that one. Not a brilliant recording, but you don't really notice it. So there are my different chimes. So now I've got to tie them up to the layers coming on. Now at the minute, these layers, I've put them as all lit. And that's because this animation is not finished yet. I put the chimes in, I know where they're going to chime, and also I put these little markers in at the top here. You can do that at any time by playing and pressing the start on your um, numeric pad. Look. There we go. That's how you do it. And that's also how you do beats as well. If you've got like a, a music in the background and you've got a beat, if you keep pressing the star button on your keyboard, then when you hear a beat, you can then get these markers to come in. You can also snap these layers into their markers. So if I just drag that along, you see it snaps to that one, and then that one, 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 then it's going to jump to the next one. There it is. So these markers actually help you out. Let's just go back a few steps here. These are where my chimes occur. So now I know which layers to switch on in which order. Let's look at the next file now. Next one is animated and they are now all lighting up one by one. Let's have a look at that one. What do we have now? You can just about make out the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che, but it's very, very faint. And that was done very easily. If you click on the layer, so which is the first one to come on? So Mr. is the first one to come on. Just zoom in a little bit. You can see the markers at the top here. They define when the chimes occur which are the chimes are down here. And I've got another layer here, um, which is the, the sound of the lift coming up. And that was taken from my Benny lifts that I filmed with my lift engineer friend. Now we have the mister lighting at that point there. So let's just play that a minute. They all light up one by one. So let's start at Mr. If I click the Mr. layer, then the properties of that appear at the top. This, I believe, is just a is just a fade up. So we go to here. Currently, we are at zero percent. Still at zero. Now we're at four percent. So that has actually. Um, Increased a little bit. I don't know why I started at zero and up to four, but I just wanted each layer so that you can just about see it. 
let's move along a little bit so I've got all these um, different positions in here but at the minute they're not really doing much okay so from there to there I've gone up to 10% there I've gone up to 100% I can actually zoom in on this as well I've said at this point here I want the brightness of the mister so I just turn that layer off so I can show you that layer there's the mister it goes from 10% and then when the chime occurs which is here I want it to oh I've got that chime turned off actually there's my chime and there's my fade up so I'm going from 10% here to 100% on the mister layer there the rest is very similar the only ones that don't fade up are the arrows and that's because they are there to begin with they just travel up with the carriage and they're always on on the second chime and then it goes from 10% you're looking at this number here 10% up to 100% and if I can keep moving the timeline along each one has a marker of when I want it faded up so let's go to the last layer so the last layer is J and let's play the J layer was the last one to come on so the timeline is now right down here let's move down to the um, this part here there we go every layer is on and when I get to seven seconds at this point the J you can just about see there is um, at 10% and then the next position is after the chime and it's now at 100% um, when I um, did the editing on the first mister I took the timeline position and I moved it to each position where a chime occurs which you know by these markers here so there's five different markers there and what I did is I took it to that marker so that's when the first chime occurs and I put a dot and I put it just on the first layer there moved it to the next chime which is the uh, is that the Mitsubishi? I remember now and I put another dot moved it to the next one that's the other, the other Mitsubishi put a dot there and then that one and then there's the last chime so these are the positions of each chime and I copied these dots which is quite easy because what you can do is you can click this one and do copy and then I moved it to the next layer and I pasted it into this line so in other words all of these layers let's just move this down a moment now all these layers you're looking at this position here at the moment have those dots in them so all that leaves me to do now is just to select the um, individual layers and just turn on that layer at the right time so that's how I faded each of those layers into the video next one is the rope shadow effect now this layer I brought in last of all because it just didn't look right I mean if I go back to the previous file and just show you that again as it's coming up it just doesn't look right it doesn't look like it's actually in the shaft so then I thought well hang on a minute maybe I should have this bit dark now I showed you how to do the um, shadow effect before let's go to this one now so this one's called animated rope shadow filter each time I do something major I always do a save as so I've got a copy if I completely mess it up or the program crashes I've always already got a um, copy of what it was before so that's how I'm able to show you all these um, different sequences here now we have the rope shadow effect now let's have a look to see which layer that is on and it's probably going to be this one here 
it is. So that's with the layer switched off. That's with the layer switched on. Let's just see if I can turn off all the other layers. And in actual fact, that might not be possible because it appears as, as a black image before. But maybe that's a good um, example. I've got the ropes. I've got the shadow layer turned on. If I were to turn it off, it would look like that. This shadow effect does not move. It just stays where it is. It fades up to 100% at the start of the movie. There. And then it just stays at 100%. And there's no position movement at all. There's no dots. Position is what I've set it in here, which is over the top of the ropes. And it gives the ropes a shading. So the top of the rope looks like it's going off into the darkness of the lift shaft. So this file is just to show you the shadow effect active. If I didn't have the shadow effect, then this is what you would have. This doesn't look right. So that shadow effect is um, really nice. Now the next one with ending zoom. Now at the end of my introduction, the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che zooms into the screen in front of you. How did I do that? And to be honest, I can't remember. Let's have a look at the timeline. So we've got a few other bits on the end here now. 